Hallelujah. God has been good. Amen. There is a word for you this morning, brothers and sisters. Pray that the Lord will strengthen you during this time. And I don't take these moments for granted. Uh, I, I realize that every time I preach, it could be my last time. And so my thing is to give my best. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 31 that whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And so I praise and I thank God. Father, we come to thee in Jesus' name, and I pray that I be hidden behind the cross of Calvary. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name that you will order my steps, you will direct my heart. You know my heart preparation as we look into your word, Father God. I pray that it will strengthen and bless someone. It is in Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen. 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 Today's uh, text scripture is Luke 17, 11 through 19. Luke, the 17th chapter verses 11 through 19. And if you have that, if you can stand in reverence, honor, respect, and glory to the Lord, I'm asked if you would please stand. We're in Luke 17, 11 through 19. I'll read the odd number beginning at verse 11, and then you read the even, and then we'll join together on verse 19. Luke 17 11 through 19 it says and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the mid the midst of Samaria and Galilee and they lifted up their voices and said Jesus master have mercy on us and when he saw them he said unto them go show and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found. And he said altogether, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. Amen. You may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his doing and precious and holy word. Today's subject is titled, A Proper Response to Your Blessing. A Proper Response to Your Blessings. A Proper Response to to your blessing. The story is told about a man who got lost in the woods one day and as the man was lost in the woods he got very frightened, he got very overwhelmed, he got discouraged and the only thing he knew to do was to get down on his knees and pray. So he said he got down on his knees and he prayed and then he got up and uh, later on he's telling the story to one of his friends and his friend said well you didn't tell us did God answer your prayer he said oh no God didn't answer your prayer God sent a uh, there was a guide who came and he showed me out of the way of the woods the point of the story is that sometimes people miss their ordinary blessings not knowing that God could have sent that guide to help him out along the way when we think about the birds that chirp in the morning, when we think about the ability to taste, to touch, to smell, when we hear the cries of a baby, when we uh, uh, ability to, to, to taste and to see, uh, we sometimes take those things for granted. Got to tell you, brothers and sisters, 2019 was a hell of a year for us. It was a difficult year. It was a challenging year. We had some difficulties on every leaning side. Yeah, there were those that faced major health scare issues. Amen. We had deaths of loved ones and family members and friends. And we had uh, attacks on marriages. And we, uh, uh, we had financial troubles. And we had challenges. And we had announcements and all kind of things that happened. But I got to tell you, joy is coming in the morning. You see, God is still blessing. Yes, he is. In our text here, we sure see that King Jesus was making his way down through Samaria and Galilee. He was on the border of, between Galilee, and he was trying to make his way to, uh, to, to help somebody along the way. And, and, and I want to remind somebody that when verse number 12 says that when Jesus came through here, there was a certain village, and he met 10 men that were lepers. 
There were 10 men that were lepers. Leprosy is sometimes called Hansen's disease. H-A-N-S-E-N uh, apostrophe S disease. It was a dreaded disease. It was a, a disease that isolated individuals. It started with little nodules and spots on your, on your skin. And then eventually what would happen is that it would get so bad that people would lose their fingers and eventually they would lose their hands and they would lose their toes and they would lose their feet and and and, and the other thing about having leprosy you were isolated you couldn't go around your family you couldn't go to fellowship and worship services you had to stand and live in what was known as a lepers colony right, right. and when anybody came within a few feet of you you had to cry out unclean 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 it was a lonely and an isolated situation that they dealt with. And in the book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and 14, it talks about the requirements if one is to be brought back into fellowship with their family or with community. You see, leprosy, brothers and sisters, is a symbol for sin. Hmm. We all have fallen short of the glory of God, and we come up short, if you will. And I got to say that without Jesus, our lives would be hopeless. Our lives yes, would be in shambles. Yes, our lives yeah, would be yeah. towed up. Our lives would be jacked up. And there was a time in our lives when we were isolated. Yes. But I got to tell you, there is hope in our Lord and Savior, yes, yeah. Jesus the Christ. So, 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 so a proper response. What is our proper response to our blessings? Even in light of everything that we've gone through in 2019, I want to let somebody know that God is still blessing us. Yes, he is. We are still standing. We are still here. See? We almost may have wanted to give up, but God strengthened us yeah. to get us through. Yeah. And if God gets us to something, he's going to get us through the situation. Amen. So, so I just want to advance for your consideration that a proper response is to lift up your voices to King Jesus. Lift up your voices to King Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a young lady by the name of Sharon who goes to the former church that we came out of at Friendly Temple. She had a stroke and she was debilitated for a long time. But I got to tell you, when you give this sister a microphone, she can bellow, she can sing in a harmonious in a melodious way and it's amazing like wow you know but if you talk to her she struggled talking but you give her uh, some music and you give her a microphone and it's cracking if you will you see it's something about when we lift up the name of our lord and savior jesus christ look at the first half of verse number 13 it says and they lifted up their voices the other thing i should have told you that when somebody had had leprosy their voice became very hoarse became very raspy, if you will. They could barely talk. Bad situation. But oh, I got to tell you that they knew that somehow Jesus was in the community. Say it, say it. And they said, Jesus is coming our way. And as a result of Jesus coming our way, they said, we're going to put together the lep temptation or the leptations, if you will. And we're going <laughs> to lift up our voices together. Some of y'all going to get that tomorrow. We're going to lift up our voices. Go ahead. And we're going to cry out. And I got to tell you something, when, when I don't care what your financial situation is, I don't care what your educational situation is, I don't care what your job title situation is, I don't care what your status is, when you are going through a crisis, when you're going through an emergency, discrimination, titles and all of those things don't mean jack. We're in the same situation and leprosy had a way of leveling folks. Sin has a way of leveling folks. And say so they said, we're going to lift up our voices because we know that there is a man who's coming our way. A man who is able to bless. A man who's able to strengthen. A man who's able to heal. A man who's able to make a way out of no way. And we heard that Jesus has done something. We heard that he's given sight to the blind. He's allowed to, the, the, the deaf to hear again. We learned that he took a little boy's bread, if you will, lunch, and he fed 5,000 men. And if he can do that, maybe he can help our situation. I just want to say to somebody, lift up your voice unto the Lord. Jesus. Tell God all about it. Cry out to him. Lord, I've been through this a long time. But Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you've given me another day. And I'm just going to keep lifting up my voice yeah. unto the Lord. Yeah. If all I have to say, Brother Dwayne, is Jesus, yeah. 
Jesus. 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 I'm going to say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If I have to say it in the morning, I'm going to say Jesus. If I have to say it at at lunchtime, I'm going to say Jesus. If I have to say it in the midnight hour, Jesus. I'm going to lift up our voice. Some of us have been defeated because we are not lifting up our voices in prayer. We're not communicating to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the great I Am, the Alpha and Omega. We're suffering in silence. So these men said, we're going to lift up our voice unto the Lord. So a proper response to your blessing is to simply say, thank you. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. Yes, Lord. I don't know if anyone has ever done anything for you and they didn't say thank you. They didn't say thank you, right? It's a cold feeling. Imagine what our Father in heaven must feel like. Look at the second half of verse number 13. And they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So the second thing, these guys cried out for mercy. You see, these guys says, Master. Master means that you are the chief commander. You are the supreme leader. You are rabbi. You are the teacher. You are the healer. You are the one that can strengthen and change things. You are the difference maker. Somebody needs to know that our master is not our money. Our master is not our boo. Our master is not our car. Our master is not education. Our master is not our job. Our master is not our ministry. Our master is not our family. Our master is Jesus. Jesus. So these men says, Master, have mercy on me. They cried out for mercy. Yeah. Mercy, yeah. mercy, mercy. You see, grace is, <laughs> not, is, 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 is getting what we don't deserve. Mercy on the other side of the continuum is not getting what we deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what mercy. They said, Lord, have mercy on us. You know, some of us have prayed those merciful prayers. Lord, if you get me out of this one. Lord, if you come through. Lord, if you just open up this door. Lord, if you close this door. Lord, if you fix this situation. And the Lord yeah. fixed it for us. Fix it. The Lord worked it out for us. The Lord gave us that job. The Lord gave us that promotion. The Lord gave us that business. The Lord restored our help. The Lord blessed our family. The Lord came through. And sometimes we want to sit down on the Lord. When God has extended mercy unto us. Yes. When I was a little boy, I used to play with matches, and I, I, I set Miss Credock's house on, or not her house, but her garage on fire, the back of her garage on fire. And I ran home, and I jumped in the bed with all of my clothes on. Uh, yeah, I jumped on the bed, and Mama thought that something was odd, and all of a sudden, Mama came in, and she said, boy, what happened? Mr. Perez had already dropped a dime and said, hey, I saw your son playing with matches, me and Frankie and Tony playing with matches and so forth. And my mama extended some mercy to me. She should have whooped my behind. She should have beat me down. She gave me a great talking to, and everybody else was on my case or whatever. And I thank God that God extended that mercy at that time. In the same way that mama extended mercy to me, when I should have got my behind whooped near, God does the same thing for us. He extends the mercy. Yes. So these men cried out, and they said, Lord, Master, have mercy on us. We're in Luke 17 and 13. He says, have mercy on us. So these men are looking for a proper response to your blessing, if you will. Then we see in verses number, verse number 14, look the next thing that they did. They responded to Jesus in faith. Now, mind you, these were 10 men who were leopards. They were outcasts. They were marginalized by society. They were the least of these, if you will. They were the ones that had to cry out and say, uh, 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 leopard, 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 unclean, unclean. Nobody visited them. Nobody texted them. Nobody was sending them Instagram messages. Nobody was coming hanging out with them. They were lonely. They were defeated. And sometimes we may have been like that at one time. But look what happened when we have an encounter with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Verse number 14, it says, And when he saw them, he said, notice this, he says he saw them, and he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priests. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get that. Get that, Shante. He says, go show yourself unto the priest. priest. These men responded in faith. They had not been healed. Right. Nothing had happened to them. Happened yet. But Jesus told them to go and show yourself unto the priest. 
You see, Leviticus 13 and 14, as I mentioned earlier, it, required, it, it talked about all of the requirements for someone to be ceremoniously clean and allowed to come back to the temple, allowed to go back into society, if you will. And Jesus hadn't done anything yet. He said, just go, go. a verb, and show thyself unto the priest. Yeah. Jesus is telling somebody, just go and apply for that job. Jesus is telling somebody to go and tell somebody you're sorry. Jesus is telling somebody to go and open up those books and study and get better your grade. Jesus is telling somebody to go start praying and build up your prayer life. Jesus is telling somebody to go and get involved in ministry and bless your community. Jesus is telling us to go, but we want to stay. Uh oh. Uh -oh. And we wonder what happened when we don't get our blessing. Well, Jesus said, I need you to go, go and show yourself unto the priest. And the scripture says, and it came to pass. Ah. I love those phraseology. Yes. Yes. Carol, when you hear it says, and it came to pass, it means that it happened. Right. It means that it was shown enough. Sure enough. It means that you can bank <laughs> on it. It means you can put your bottom line dollar on it that God is going to work this out. Right. It says that, and it came to pass... Get this, that as they went. went. You as. see, sometimes we miss out on our blessings because we don't want to go. We don't want to go. And God sometimes directs us to do strange and odd things that don't line up with what we think that it should be. Right. But he's telling them to go. I know nothing has happened. I know you're ashy and I know some of your digits, your fingers are falling off and some of you are dragging your foot and so forth. I know you look scabby and scabby and whatever, but he says, go anyway. And I got to tell you, you get to the Lord Jesus Christ any way that you can. That's right. That's if you right. got to crawl to the Lord Jesus, you crawl to him, Lord. <laughs> Lord, I, <laughs> oh Lord, my family is a mess. Lord, I'm struggling. My ministry, whatever it may be, you get to the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about your hair. Don't worry about your makeup. Don't worry about whatever it is. You go to the Lord Jesus Christ because he wants you just as you are. Says, and as they went, they were cleansed. Don't miss that. These guys responded in faith. They allowed their faith to be bigger than their fear. That I don't know how this is going to work out, but he said, let's go. And they all started walking. I don't know if the first one was healed first and the second one, or if they were all cleansed along. But all I know is that Sister Joyce, they were all cleansed. They were all healed. They were all blessed. They were all changed. They were all directed. They were all different. They were all unusual. God has done a miracle in their lives. And you should know that leprosy would typically last somebody 25 to 30 years. I don't know how long they had been in this leprous colony, but it was too long, Latifah. God was saying, today is your day that I want to bless you. As they went, as they went, God has put some ministry ideals in some of our spirits. God has put some ideals and some dreams and some hopes and some aspirations in many of our lives. And somebody is telling you that you can't do it. Somebody is telling you you're not smart enough. Somebody is telling you you're not different. You're not unique or whatever. I'm telling you that we are the children of the most high God. And if God gets something in our spirit, we can do all things, not something, not a few things. All things through Christ who gives us the strength. Yes, Philippians 1 and 6. Be confident in this one thing. He who begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. As they went, oh, I want you to get that. As they went. As they went, they changed the roof out. As they went, they changed out the ceiling. As they went, they changed out the inside of the sanctuary. As they went, they evangelized the community. As they went, more Latinos came in. As they went, more whites was involved. As they went, everybody came. I'm telling you, you got to see it through the eyes of faith. Faith is like money. It is what we need to do business in the kingdom of God. Hebrews 11 and 1, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You got to see it through the eyes of faith that your daddy will bless you. I said this way, if he's done it once, he'll do it again. He'll do it again and again and again. Take a look at yourself, where you've been and where you're going. Hasn't he always come through? Oh, God is able. 
So these men, it says, as they went, they were cleansed. God is telling somebody who's dealing with fear under the sound of my voice to do something. To just step out on faith and watch and see what I'll do. But fear is telling you, no, don't do it. No, you're going to look embarrassed. No, you're going to do whatever. You do what God would have you to do. Amen. Told you this before when I was with Pastor Fred, the late Pastor Fred Stanfield. Yes, Got to get this, Ewing. Stanfield was a preacher. I was a deacon, right? And guess what he put me over in the fellowship of the prison ministry? 75 to 100 men every Sunday. He said, Deacon Robinson, you're going to lead the song service. I was like, <laughs> what? He said, yeah, I just want you to lead the song service. So what I did, I remember the few words like, what a friend we have in Jesus, blessed assurance. And guess what happened, Sister May? There were some brothers in prison who was raised up in the church house. They knew how to sing better than I knew how to sing. And I knew how to make relationships work. And I started getting those guys together, and I need y'all to come and stand up in here. And they got to singing so well that people used to pass by, and what are they doing up in there? Next you know, the Latinos started to come. The Asians started to come. It was amazing what God was doing. It wasn't Ed. It was just as we went, I was being obedient to what the pastor asked me to do. I could have said, hey, I'm not a singer, which I'm not, wink, wink. But God blessed, and God showed up, and he blessed us in a mighty way. And guess what happened after a little while, Sharon? I started to stand back a little bit more and more. I just kind of opened up, and man, hey, man, we're going to sing this song. And them brothers get up there and sing, and I get up there and walk with them. We wave our hand or whatever, but we had a wonderful time, man. I'm just trying to tell somebody an example of how God can do that. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, if any person be in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all, behold, all things become new. These men were blessed beyond measure. So a proper response again. One, we got to lift up our voices to Jesus. Two, we got to cry out for mercy. Three, we got to respond to Jesus in faith. And lastly, number five, we got to glorify God at Jesus' feet. Look at verses 15 through 19. It says, in one of them. How many was there? There was 10 of them all together. But only one. When he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice, he glorified God. He didn't go into the house, uh, Sister Mack, and said, pray the Lord. Pray the Lord, brother, sister. Pray the Lord. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I bless you. Oh, Lord, I thank you, man. I'm looking good, Lord. I thank you. No, he lifted up his voice. And he said, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I rejoice that I was in a bad situation. And you lifted me up. You raised me up. You healed my body. You took all of this leprosy off of me. And now I can go back to the community. I can go to my mama's cookings that she has. I can go into the temple. I can fellowship with my homeboys and homegirls that I grew up with. He lifted up his voice. Only one came back and he glorified God. He praised him. Glory. Honor. Eulogy. All means to bless. It means to speak well. He honored the Lord for what he did, Mike. That God raised him up, moved him out of darkness, put him in the light of in the light, and put his feet on solid ground. God has done some of that to some of us also. And we ought to glorify him. We ought to lift up our voices. We ought to tell people that God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Oh, God is good. Yes. We're going to glorify him. We're going to bring honor to him. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to sit down. I'm going to tell somebody Hallelujah. about the goodness of the Lord. Not only that, but it says, and he fell at his feet, at the feet of Jesus. He just fell at his feet. The Maasai tribe, M-A-S-A-I, is a tribe in Western Africa. They have a unique way of saying thank you. What they do, they get down on the ground like on the ground like I am. And they put their forehead on the ground. And they say, My head is in the dirt. In other words, I am humbling, submitting myself to you, Lord, and I thank you. My question to you is your head in the dirt. When was the last time you bowed down to the Lord of Lord? When was the last time you got down on your knees and told Jesus all about it? When was the last time you got down and just said, thank you, Lord? Well, my God. 
we need to we need more neology the study of being on the knees if you will they say strong men stay on bended knees strong women stay on bended knees strong people stay on bended knees i'm telling somebody you better flex those knees for the lord jesus the christ he fell down on his feet on his face giving him thanks and he was a samaritan the Samaritans were those mixed Jews. <clears throat> they were part of that Babylonian Assyrian captivity. They were mixed. They were considered sister to be half breeds. They were considered to be less than. They were the ones that were kind of outcasts, if you will. The Samaritan and the Jews didn't really have any dealings with each other. But Jesus called out this guy. And that reminds me of Romans 10 and 13. It says, for whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved doesn't matter if you're black doesn't matter if you're white doesn't matter if you're from russia doesn't matter if you're from 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 jerusalem wherever you may be god is able to save jesus said and he was a samaritan in other words he was the least of the one that they probably thought would come back and give him some praise give him some glory give him some honor so i got to tell you you don't need a microphone to praise him you don't need a collar to praise him. You don't need a pulpit to praise him. You don't need a title to praise him. All you need is your mouth and your heart to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, you've been good to me and my family. Lord, I praise you for another day. I praise you for another second. Lord, I praise you for the food on my table. I praise you for my children, even though sometimes they can be cray-cray. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the shelter that you've given to me. I thank you for the pain in my body that you've given me. And you still allow me to move around and hobble along. Get in the spirit of thanking the Lord. Yes think about people who leave their families I told a friend of mine one time he was talking about leaving his wife and whatever I said you're gonna leave the 80 and go after the 20 what are you talking about man your wife has invested in you your wife was with you when you were nobody and you're gonna go for this 20 percent of this young lady that's winking at you shaking a tail feather whatever dude you better get your mathematics to write and get on the other side in other words what looks good on the on the outside ain't always good the pastors, it always looked, the, the pastors always look green on the other side, right? But I got to tell you, the grass is just as rough to cut over there than it is on the side you're in. So you better stay where you are, what you know, what you know, because your people is with you. You better stand on the promises of God. You better honor your vow. You better fall down and say, Lord, help me. Verse 17 said, and Jesus answered, said, where are not the ten? Were there not ten cleans, but where are the nine? God is asking somebody, where are the nine? Are you the nine or are you the one? In other words, I bless you in the morning. I bless you in the field. I bless you in the city. I bless you over and over. But where are you giving him the praise, the thanks, the glory, and the honor? Or are you like that man I said at the beginning of the story that was there in the woods and he got lost and he prayed and a friend said, well, did God answer your prayer? He said, no, a guy came and a guide came and got me out. No, you better give God your, your blessing. God can send a guide. God can send a boat. God can send all kind of things to save us in our lives, right? So Jesus, I would imagine Elder Simon that when he asked that question, he probably was painful that there were nine of folks that were blessed and only one came back. Only one came. That is a sad testimony. But this man came back and look what happened. Verse number 18. Jesus says, there are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. This Samaritan, this foreigner, this immigrant, this outcast, this less than, the one that everybody had thrown outside or whatever. He's the only one that came and gave praise and glory to honor. Let me say it this way. Everybody who say they're going to heaven may not be going to heaven. Yeah. It's not about the religiosity. It's not about the external words that we do. It's the condition of the heart that we have. Some people can use all of the right words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, on my way to heaven. But you, 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 you blow the horn at it. They ready to fight? They ready to kill? They ready to cut you? No, we're talking about a heart condition. So it's not about how much you give or whatever. It's about your relationship with Jesus. Verse number 19, and he said unto him, arise and go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. 
translated those other nine tish they were healed on the physical side this man got a double blessing he got not only healed but his heart he got salvation from the lord jesus christ which is really what it's all about he was saved and the lord blessed him he gave glory to honor he lifted up his voice and that's why I was very encouraged. Deacon Leroy and I was talking about this this morning, watching the game last night, Clemson Tigers, and uh, they, they good game against Oklahoma State University. And when they won that semifinal game on last night, uh, uh, the, the coach, Coach Sweeney, first of all, he said, I praise and thank God. But the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, he got up there with that headband on and everything. He says, you know, well, I thank God for what he's done. And he says, Ephesians 3 and 20 says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above whatever he can ask for thing. At that point, Leroy, I would say, amen. I said, you my man, right? In other words, God gave him a platform. And some of the athletes don't like to use the platform. Right. But this man called out and said, God is good. And we prayed about this. And Clemson was being ruled out because they were, quote, supposed they had been playing soft teams. Right. Yeah. But they right. rolled on last night. <laughs> and the Lord blessed them in a mighty way. And I'm saying to somebody that God wants to bless you. Our proper response to God for our blessing is, one, we ought to lift up our voices to Jesus. Two, we ought to cry out in mercy. Three, we ought to respond to Jesus in faith, and we ought to glorify God at Jesus' feet. So as I get ready to close, I just want to remind somebody that in your happy moments, praise God. Even when you're going through the difficult times and whatever, in your happy moments, you praise God. In the difficult moments, see God. When it seems like you're overwhelmed and it seems like you don't know what to do, I'm telling somebody to see God. In your quiet moments, when you just don't have no word to say at all, just worship the Lord. It might be the exaltation of the hands. It might be the lifting of the heart. You just worship the God in the times when you're quiet and in your painful moments when lord i don't know which way to go just trust god trust in the lord with all your heart lean not lean not lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways recognize him acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths and in every moment thank god lord i thank you for the lows i thank you for the difficulties lord i thank you for the challenges lord i thank you for the deaths Lord, I thank you for the impacts. I thank you for the setbacks. I thank you for the heartaches. I thank you for the hurts. I thank you, Father, not only for that, but Lord, I thank you for giving me life. Lord, I thank you for ordering my steps. Lord, I thank you for my family. Lord, I thank you for my faith. Lord, I thank you for my job. Lord, I thank you for my friendship. Lord, I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. Give God the praise. Give him the glory. Give him the honor that is due his name. Be like the one that I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, Lord, thank you. That when I looked at my hands, my hands was new. When I looked at my feet, my feet was new. When I got to the point I was able to just bounce up and down, Lord. And then I was able to run a little bit. Lord, I thank you. That's what it's all about. A proper response for your blessings. You may not have what you think you should have, but I want you to know there's always somebody worse off than us. You may only have Cheerios. There are some people in this country wish they had a Cheerio to eat. You may not have the best job. There are a lot of people that's working hard and been laid off and they can't find another job. You may not have had something negative may have happened in your church and you ran away from the church. God is saying, no, go back to your church. Go back to your fellowship because there's some people wish they did have a church to go to where somebody can pray for them and recognize and encourage and acknowledge them. The point of the matter is count your blessing. Count them one by one. Count your blessing to see what God has done. We need to let somebody know that God is good. Father, we come to thee in Jesus' name. We give you the praise. We give you the glory, the honor that is due your name, Father. We thank you, Father, for this time of fellowship. We ask in Jesus' name, Father, that you will bless someone under the sound of my voice as we go through this last Sunday in the month of 2019. Lord, you've been good to us, and we thank you, Father, even through the myriad of deaths, through the challenges of marriage, through the family drama, through the issues of trust, the issues, Father God, of being overwhelmed. Lord, you still kept us. 
You kept us as we went to school. You kept us, Father, as we drove to work. You kept us, Father God, as we played sports. You kept us as we did extracurricular activities. You kept us as we came to worship you Sunday after Sunday. And for that, we say thank you. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that if there's someone under the sound of my voice who's in search for a church, who wants to rededicate themselves to the Lord, someone, Father God, who wants to be baptized, if they're here, Father, I pray that you move upon their hearts even now. It is in Jesus' name, and God's people said amen. Amen. If you would keep your head bowed, your eyes closed, your heart open. On this last Sunday, Sunday, December the 29th in the year of 2019, the Lord may have been speaking to someone today through this message. He's telling you that I want you to get in fellowship with a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. If you're here today, whether as a candidate for baptism or come to us by Christian experience, if you're here today, I'm asking if you will raise your hand. Is there one? The Lord may have been speaking to today. Is there one? 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 